Starting October 17th, Darkrai is coming to the Tier 5 Raid Pool in Pokemon Go. Not only is Darkrai the best Dark-type attacker in the game, but it is the first ever Mythic Pokemon to have its debut in the general Tier 5 Raid Pool, not as an EX Raid Boss. This suggests that future Mythic Pokemon may be able to be released in the general Tier 5 Raid Pool right away as well. I'm looking at you, Keldeo. At any rate, Darkrai, best Dark-type attacker. We gotta beat this thing down and catch a whole bunch. And then alongside Darkrai's release, the Halloween event has a 2x catch candy going on. So get some extra candy for your Darkrai's as well. The time is ripe to harvest Darkrai. Let's get into how to counter it. And then after that, I'll tell you how good it is in the raid and trainer battle metas. So here we have a graph of the Darkrai counters against Shadow Ball Darkrai. The reason why I chose Shadow Ball Darkrai is because Shadow Ball is the most aggressive move set. Nobody really gets a benefit from it having Shadow Ball, except for our boy Ursaring over here, so I felt it would be the best comprehensive way to view all the Pokemon that counter it. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Swag Graphs, this is simulated using Go Battle Sim on Game Press using level 40 counters, unless specified otherwise, uh, against a Tier 5 Shadow Ball Dark Cry Raid, no dodging, with best friendship. The Y axis here is DPS damage per second, which basically is the fastness of your Pokemon. And then down here we have the x-axis, which is TDO, which is basically the tankiness of your Pokemon. So the higher up and the more to the right your Pokemon is, the better it's going to be for this raid. Now you'll see up here I got the duo DPS cutoff line. Yeah, Breloom almost makes it, just almost makes it without a weather boost, uh, but doesn't make it. I, this guy cannot be duoed without a weather boost. And then as far as how relevant the tankiness of your Pokemon is, this is the double relobby avoid TDO. Chances are you are going to have to relobby against this specific fight, um, but not relobbying twice if you're trying to do a trio, well that could be very handy. So keep this in mind when you're building your teams. Like Breloom, best DPS, but ugh, level 38, not maxed out, well you might have to relobby again. So those Machamps, definitely backing up the team there. And then the trio DPS of course is 16.7 uh, which is well you know these are 20 DPS counters so everything here will be able to help out with the trio. So when it comes to the best counters to the Darkrai raid well Darkrai is basically like a Reggie you know you just bring fighting types you punch it down you, you get your candy you catch it whatever you win. So pretty easy fight overall it's basically like a cooler version of the Regis because it's uh, easier to beat down, which is always nice because then you don't fail in random raids full of aggrons. And uh, even cooler too is that it's actually meta relevant, so pretty boss. So yeah, Breloom, best DPS, a little bit less on the tanky side, Machamp, always the solid general counter. If it's raining outside and you got a maxed out Yan Mega, then it can compete with the two big fighting types. The other two bug type Pokemon... Not as hot, I'd probably just stick with Breloom and Machamp if you already got them. But if you don't and you got maxed out Pincers and Caesars, well hey, rain's out, the bugs are out, let's get rolling. And as always, Hariyama is always a good alternative option to the fighting types. A bit more thick, definitely less damage, but definitely better than the alternative fighting type Pokemon. Uh, no apologies to Blaziken, I don't care about you. Now if you are looking for an extra tanky option for this fight, um, I definitely recommend Togekiss over here. Yeah, just ultra thick Pokemon, resists the dark type attacks, doubly resists the fighting type attacks, so definitely a solid option. If you do know you're up against a Shadow Ball Darkrai and you got a maxed out Earthring, a counter play rough Earthring can also be extremely tanky <laughs> against Shadow Ball specifically. In fact, it's actually tankier than what I'm showing here on the graph. It's got like one more cell block over, um, but I didn't want to squish the graph anymore just for this niche counter, but... Yeah, good idea. Now, you might be looking at this and thinking, well, Ryan Swag, what about the other fairy-type Pokemon? What about Wigglytuff? What about Gardevoir? What about Granbull? Uh, Clefable? Well, Granbull's kind of tucked over here with the mediocre options. You know, I mean, these guys are passable. They're not bad. Um, they're better than worse things, but... So Granbull, just stick with Togekiss, and you'll be fine there. Uh, when it comes to Gardevoir, I know, I'm doing Gardevoir and Injustice here. It's Shadow Ball, a move that Gardevoir is weak to. But Gardevoir is also neutral to dark, so things don't really improve too much there. Togekiss, on the other hand, resists dark. All the fighting types resist dark. So yeah, Gardevoir, you're not sneaking in there. And then when it comes to Focus Blast, which is a move that Gardevoir doubly resists, well, hey, Togekiss also doubly resists it, and is still better in damage 
and uh, tankiness for that fight. So Gardevoir, if you know you're up against the Focus Blast set and you love using your Gardevoirs, that'll be the time to use it. Um, but definitely living in Togekiss's shadow here. And then as far as like Clefable goes, Clefable is just like worse Granbull, so didn't even cross the 20 line here. And then uh, Wigglytuff. I don't think Wigglytuff even crossed the 18 line on the initial graph. And its tankiness, even though it is a normal fairy type Pokemon, uh, actually wasn't all that impressive. I think it like ended up like somewhere down here, like between 3.5 and 3.75. I mean, that's not bad, but the DPS was not good. So yeah, sorry Wigglytuff. Not sorry. Not sorry at all. Overall, beating Darkrai down with a group of like three or four friends should be pretty easy as long as you guys are equipped. And if you are in a group of random people and you got a whole Machamp squad ready, well at least you can have the peace of mind knowing that you're doing at least 50% of the damage of the raid if you need to, you know, carry some egg rounds here. As far as the duo goes, I mean, look how close the fighting types already are without a weather boost. So yeah, if you're in the cloudy weather, Breloom, Machamp are going to be the bread and butter for a duo. Now that we know how to best beat down Darkrai, how useful is it in the meta? So Darkrai has been referenced many times in the past. I mean, it's a Gen 4 Pokemon, so we've been thinking about it since Gen 4. And yeah, it is the best dark type attacker in the game. As far as being a dark type goes, they're always in competition with ghost type Pokemon. They both counter ghost and psychic type Pokemon. So it is actually one of the best dark slash ghost type Pokemon in the game. And, uh... <laughs> to make things more interesting, it actually has a blended moveset. The Shadow Ball damage is actually better than the Stab Dark Pulse damage, so Darkrai with Snarl and Shadow Ball, definitely the way to go. Now, Giratina Origin Form does have higher DPS to the third power times TDO, which is a general ranking for a Pokemon's raid goodness, um, but Darkrai does have the leg up on the DPS, and it has a different set of resistances than Giratina, which can allow it to pull ahead in many battles. For example, if you think about Mewtwo, Giratina, weak to ghost type attacks, ice type attacks, neutral damage from psychic type attacks, Darkrai, doubly resists psychic, resists ghost, and uh, is neutral to ice. So there's definitely a place for Darkrai if you already have a couple of Giratina origin forms already maxed out. That said, if you're already set on your ghost and dark type squad and you don't really want to spend the Stardust on a Darkrai, that's perfectly alright. Just farm up the candy and maybe you'll get an improvement in the future. Maybe you want to hold out for the shiny. Up to you. But there is another use for Darkrai in the meta, and that is Master League PvP. When it comes to the Master League in PvP, there are two kings, and that is Giratina Origin Form and Dialga. While Darkrai, being a dark type Pokemon with dark type attacks, clearly counters the Giratina Origin Form. So we got that guy down. Then when it comes to the Dialga, we got Focus Blast. Now, will you reach your Focus Blast in time to take down Dialga? Most often, not. No, not really. But if shields are down and you have the energy advantage, well then that will just take out Dialga straight up. It's Focus Blast, man. So Darkrai is definitely a really cool option for the Master League in that regard. Now, as far as counters to Darkrai in the Master League goes, it still has to worry about the fighting types, the very same fighting types that are there to beat down Dialga. So having Dialga and Darkrai on your team will give you a double fighting weakness if your opponent has a Machamp or a Lucario waiting in the wings. Darkrai also runs the problems against Swampert, because Swampert is just that powerful. It's a neutral matchup, Swampert wins it, which is a Pokemon that also gives Dialga issues. So Darkrai is definitely a really solid option for the Master League, but it's not redefining the Master League in any way. It's just given us uh, another option to harass Giratina and Dialga, which is definitely of the good. Now as far as its moveset in the Master League goes, uh, we're gonna, <laughs> it's not Shadow Ball anymore, it's a Dark Pulse for sure. It's got a lower energy cost, and because of the stab, it has more damage than Shadow Ball. In that sense, if you are powering up a Darkrai for the Master League, uh, I think it'd be fine to keep it with Dark Pulse. While Shadow Ball is the better raid attack, Dark Pulse isn't that far behind in raids. So, if you're a PvP -er. Now you might be thinking, well hey, Ryan Swag, if Darkrai is good at beating down Giratina in the Master League, well, why wouldn't it be good at it in the Ultra League? Well, because of Darkrai's big attack stat, when the stats get lowered for the Ultra League, um, Darkrai is actually really frail, and Giratina Altered Form can beat Darkrai down before it can beat Giratina. So, if you're in the Ultra League as a Dark-type and you can't even beat Giratina, 
what are you doing there? That's that's my question to Darkrai. So yeah, I think Darkrai is uh, best off sticking with the Master League. And that's Darkrai. Basically, a cooler Reggie. You use fighting type Pokemon, and you win. That easy. And it's actually meta relevant this time around, so heck yeah. If you got any questions on this content, comment below. Let me know what's up. I'll be happy to help you out. And if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more like it, well then make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. The f oh, hey there. I was going to just whisper in my mic and...